All right, hey guys, my name is Shadow and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. So as I'm sure you guys know by now, 2.1 is out. And in 2.1, we have a feature called the Engineers. And what these guys do is they can upgrade modules on your ship. And how they do this is you give them some stuff that you've collected and they improve one of your modules with that stuff. But um, this stuff is like uh, materials that you found on a planet like, uh, you know, metals or mi different minerals or stuff like that. It's also uh, components that you've salvaged from ships that you've destroyed or, that, or ships that have been wrecked in space that you found or wherever, wherever it is that you got the components. But some of this stuff is also data. They need sets of data to, to build you certain things. So one of the first engineers that we get access to is called Todd the Blaster McQuinn, and something that he can upgrade are your multi cannons, and specifically, I would like to upgrade my class three multi cannons on my Python. Well, I have two out of three of the materials that I need to do that upgrade. The third thing that I need to do that upgrade is something called cracked infrastructure firmware, and this is a piece of data that you obtain by doing a scan. Well, we can actually go take a look at the recipe list and see what we need to produce this upgrade. So if we open up our engineers tab and click on Todd the Blaster McQuinn, we can see any pinned blueprints we have here, and I've just happened to have this one pinned. So what we need to do this upgrade are nickel, which I have, hybrid capacitors, which I have, and cracked industrial firmware, which is what we need to get. Now over here, it tells you where you can obtain this. So it says captured from settlement data point networks and known to be salvaged from signal sources. Now I've probably been in 40 or 50 signal sources that would be likely to have this type of data. I haven't seen it. It's, it's just something mythical like unicorns. The, that's out there in the wild. Well, what I haven't tried so far is capturing it from a settlement data point network. And that's what we're gonna do today. Now that requires a little bit of specialized equipment and I have that assembled here. So let's go back into our outfitting screen and just see what it's gonna take to obtain this. So we're gonna have to do something known as a ground assault. Now there are missions that you can pick up from the mission board for this type of thing, but we're not gonna be doing that today. We're just gonna go and find some place um, to do this. Now, wherever we're gonna go do this, you're gonna have to be okay if you wanna do this. You're gonna have to be okay with, uh, with getting a wanted status because you're going to be illegally assaulting a base, basically. But that's okay because we're not gonna do it in, in our home system. We're gonna go somewhere a little bit farther away and do it. So let's take a look at the build for this. So we'll start with our core internal modules. First of all, there are some very important components and there are some components that, well, you could probably not use the ones that I have here. But one of the most important things you're going to need is the military grade composite hull. Now, when we start assaulting bases and stuff, they're going to have turrets as well as little vehicles firing at us. And those turrets are very damaging. So we have good shields and we have a lot of shield cells, but they may, they may knock our shields down. And in that case, we need some, some hull that can take some hits. So military grade is really quite essential for this. Now we have, we have the 5A power plant because we have a lot of heavy power drawing equipment on this. So we really need that power output. Now the 5B thrusters, are, are probably negotiable. I mean, you could probably get away with using stock thrusters on this. I don't really like stock thrusters, so I've done away with that. The frame shift drive, that's also negotiable. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of how far you want to be able to jump, really. We get 17.66 light years with this particular frame shift drive. I could have gone with A, I could have gone with D, I could have gone with whatever. This is just what was available at the station, so I put it on there. Now, your life support, um, you may want to upgrade your life support because with the turrets that you're going to be fighting against, I mean, you're going to be facing them. So you may be taking hits in your canopy when your shields go down. So you may want a little bit of life support time, more than five minutes or so, because if you start assaulting a base, you're going to be wanted and you don't want to try and land at a space station in the same system when you have a wanted status 
they will destroy your ship. So you want to have a little bit of time to jump to another system if your canopy gets compromised. And I'm not saying our canopy will get compromised. I'm just saying this is like wearing a seatbelt, basically. You don't want to have to use it, but it's good to have it. Now, the 4A power distributor, this is necessary because we need our shields to be able to recharge as quickly as possible. 5D sensors, so I've gone with D because they're the lightest weight and our sensors really are not critical to this. And of course we have a fuel tank which comes stock with the ship. Now um, let's take a look at our optional internal mount, or internal uh, compartments. So we have the 6A shield generator on this ship and this is one of the things that will be essential. We need the absolute best shields that we can get on this ship and these are it. Now we have a bunch of shield cell banks. We have one 5A and we have two 3A and those are the largest and best shield cell banks we can get on this ship and we need all the shield cells we can get because again, those base turrets are just insane. So yeah, we're gonna have to be putting up a fight against those. Now in order to scan the, the data port things at the settlements, we have to have an SRV. And so we have a planetary vehicle hangar on this ship so that we can land get out in our SRV and go scan those data networks because that's where the cracked infrastructure firmware is going to come from. And preferably, we need two things of cracked infrastructure firmware. Actually, preferably, we need more than two things of cracked infrastructure firmware because I'm sure you guys are aware that engineer upgrades are somewhat random in their outcomes, so we may not want to take the first roll that we get on, on that upgrade. So if we can get more than two things of cracked infrastructure firmware, like if we could get multiples of two, if we could get four or six or eight things of cracked infrastructure firmware, that would really be ideal. But it, that's really dependent on how many data ports we find at a settlement and how many of them actually give us cracked infrastructure firmware because I haven't actually done this yet, so I don't know how many, if any, will give us cracked infrastructure firmware. So we're gonna go find out actually if, if these things will give us any cracked infrastructure firmware, and if so, how many, or we're gonna find out if cracked infrastructure firmware is just some mythical thing that is rumored to exist in the game, but doesn't really. So. Let's take a look at our weapon loadout, which is pretty much the most important thing on the ship. So for our four small hard points, we have missile racks. Now these are dumb fire missiles, and we don't really need seeker missiles because we're just firing at stationary targets basically, but these missiles do a lot of damage. The downside is there aren't a lot in each rack. There are only, uh, what, eight or 16 missiles in each rack. So we have to use them precisely. We have to make each shot count and um, yeah, we just have to use them sparingly and not waste them basically. And then for our two medium hard points, we're gonna have plasma accelerators because uh, it's very, very difficult to hit a turret and a base with lasers or multi cannons or anything like that. But plasma accelerators can cover kind of a wider area than a laser and they do much more damage in one shot. So all fixed weapons all firing at stationary targets, except those ground vehicles, but this should have it covered. So, I think that's it for our build. So let's actually go locate a place to take this, and then we'll try it out. Okay, right now we are looking at a system called Wanami, and this is about 15 and some change light years from where I'm currently located. Now, as you can see, almost every single planet in this system is is landable so we're going to look at this tab right here and this will tell us everything that's in this system now we want to see bases that are on these planets and uh, that's pretty much uh this pierce's progress so we're looking at pierce's progress here and i don't see really any other bases in this system but this one looks okay so we can look at this planetary surface right here and we can see that it's got one little plus. Now, I believe that these pluses indicate a difficulty rating and they can go up to three. So one should be a relatively uh, a relatively unguarded location, not, but not altogether unchallenging. So we're gonna plot a route right to that base and then we're gonna exit out of the map. Now we can look over at our target panel and we can see it's only one jump with our 5B frameshift drive to Wanami. So we're gonna go ahead and launch 
and uh, we'll just we'll just head there and we will assault the crap out of that base and um, hopefully hopefully it will give us cracked infrastructure firmware because uh, I don't actually know if that's real I just know that we need that to do our multi cannon upgrades and hopefully if we can actually get that cracked infrastructure firmware the next video you guys see will be upgrading the multi cannons with Todd the Blaster McQuinn on the Python that we took a look at in the last video. So let's launch this ASP and we'll go do that right now. Here we go. Okay, now we're right above it. This looks like a pretty small settlement, so Hopefully, with any luck, it won't be heavily guarded. So I'm really not looking for a big fight. I'm really looking for the cracked infrastructure firmware. Now, we've got a couple of ships flying around it. Now, I've seen ships flying around um, bases before. However, I don't think these are necessarily guarding it. And they, they're just transport ships anyways. Okay, there's, there's the, the base right there. So... All right, yeah, it's gonna tell me I'm trespassing. That doesn't really matter because I'm here to blow it up pretty much. So we're gonna deploy hard points. And uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Trespass zone Okay. Now the turrets, I believe, are mounted on these things. Okay, don't slam into the ground. Okay, I'm not the best at maneuvering around on planets, but uh, yeah, I think I'm looking at turrets right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, so we have several turrets to take out, and I don't see any ground vehicles, so that's good. That would present a little bit, a little bit larger of a challenge, but um, yeah, let's just start by taking out some of these turrets here. So... Here we go. Okay, one turret down. That's pretty much one missile launch equals one turret destroyed. And uh, yeah, we're getting bounties for this and stuff. But uh, it's no big deal. I mean, I don't really plan on ever coming back to this system again. So just if you're going to do this, make sure you pick a system that you don't care about. Let's see. It is a little weird to maneuver. Now that green stuff happening there, that is point defense. And I've just realized I forgot to go over my utility mounts, but I have point defense and I have a chaff launcher, which I'm not actually using at the moment. And uh, I need to take out that last turret right there. Okay. It seems like maybe the... Uh, the uh, plasma accelerators are not extremely effective against the turrets, but we'll just launch a missile and that'll be fine. Okay, so it looks like we've cleared all the defenses. So now what we're going to do is we're going to deploy our landing gear and we're going to set down actually pretty close to this and we're going to find data points. That, that white thing right there that I'm aiming at right now, that's what we need to scan. As many of those as are at this base, we need to scan those. Okay, so here we go. Landing. Okay, now let's deploy the vehicle. And before I forget, I need to empty out my data containment thing here. Well, I need to empty out a little bit of it anyway. Let's see. So let's get rid of, I don't know, something. I don't, I don't know what things in here are going to be important. So let's see, we have 77 of these. So let's discard, okay, sorry. let's discard uh, 10, 10 of these. And then we have uh, 100, okay, then we have 90. Or we have 10, wow, can't do math. We have 10 spaces left, all right. So let's get up there and scan that thing. I 
believe we have to use the turret to do this. Let's see. Oops, no, I don't want to fire at it. Okay, it's not. It's not really nice. Okay, there we go. I have to target it. Can't tell I don't do this all the time. Okay, now did we get anything from that? 600 credit bounty. It doesn't look like we actually got uh, any usable data, however. Let's see. Is there anything else around here that we can scan? There may be other points we can scan. Let's find out. Let's see if we can destroy that too. Power to the weapons. Okay, so we can destroy turrets. Okay, there are other things to scan here. So let's try doing that. Target this data link. And then scan it. And hopefully it'll give us something usable. One of three links established security protocol doors. Oh, okay, so maybe it's saying I have to, to do all three of these within 60 seconds or something? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's what it's saying. Hmm. That seems uh, not likely to happen, though. Okay, let's, let's see. Where is this one? I think that's the same one. I don't know. Let's scan it. Okay, two out of three. Okay, I see another thing over this way, maybe. So let's drive around here. Okay, so we have another data length right here. Target, scan. Go. Three out of three. New data. Classified scan. Cracked industrial firmware. Look, we got it. Okay. We've got cracked industrial firmware. Great. All right. I am, I am ecstatic about that. Great. So now we need to get back in the ship and get the hell out of here. So let's see if we can actually get away with our new cracked industrial firmware. So that is, in fact, how you get it. I just obtained it. But I think I only obtained one. And we'll check when we are safely out of the vicinity here. Okay, board ship. There we go. Okay. We made it back to the ship. Let's see if we can get away in one piece before Johnny Law catches up with us. Okay, here we go. Lifting off. Landing gear retracted. Okay, we are out of here. And let's frame shift. Four, three, two, one. Okay, looks like we made it. Boom. Now, let's just check our data inventory thing here. And we can see, yes, we in fact, we did obtain one cracked industrial firmware. Okay, so it looks like that's what we have to do. That is the hassle we have to go through to get cracked industrial firmware. So I can now take that and upgrade one of my, of my C3 multi-cannons on my Python. So uh, I'm just gonna do that a couple of more times and then in the next video you guys are gonna watch, we're gonna be going to Todd the Blaster McQuinn and upgrading our, uh, our C3 multi-cannons on the Python. So, awesome, so that worked out beautifully. Okay, it was a little clunky in the beginning, but we got it great, so. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. Let me know if you liked it. If you, I mean, if you liked it, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you have anything to add to this, anything that I didn't cover, anything I missed, 
uh, let me know. Um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, yeah, all the stuff I just said, subscribe to my channel. And that's it for me, so I will see you guys in the next one.